protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Of course, it's the last couple of days before a very big election. Super Tuesday is tomorrow. And we have everyone getting their golem on, as we pointed out, as we're going to break, you know, calling people a tricksy, false liar, murderer. Let's take a look at that last charge, murderer, and look at who it's coming from. None other than Michael Hayden, former NSA CIA director, Clinton appointee, who is now wading into the presidential race, going on Fox News and other places, complaining about Donald Trump. What would a Donald Trump presidency actually look like, asked Huffington Post. So they asked this guy, this guy who has been part of the disposition matrix where they assassinate people with drones, okay, where they spy on every aspect of our lives. And he has had the audacity to go on programs with Judge Napolitano saying, I'm a libertarian. It's like, yeah, right, you're a libertarian, okay. But here's where he comes up and he takes this libertarian pose again in terms of criticizing Donald Trump. He says, uh, if Trump were to make good on his vow to kill terrorist family members, the U.S. military, he said, would refuse to act. He said, you're required not to follow an unlawful order. That would be a violation of all the international laws of armed conflicts. Yeah, it would also be a violation of the Constitution. But of course, Michael Hayden doesn't seem to care about the Constitution. And we need to take that phrase from Michael Hayden, thrown out in the heat of an election, and we need to put that on a plaque on the wall so that people in the military, people in the NSA, in the CIA, understand that there are laws that transcend the orders from people like Michael Hayden. We need to understand that. He's calling people to uh, stand up in a way uh, against, uh, as, as people were called on to do in the Nuremberg trial, saying you don't excuse this action by saying I was just following orders. That's very true. So I hope he remembers that as we progress into the police state, as we continue down this road, that he has pushed us down so many times. And I think that in one way, if Donald Trump takes an authoritarian uh, bent as he is talking, as he does the same things that the GOP, the rest of the GOP candidates are saying, as the Democrats have done, bragging that they're going to step up the authoritarian police state, Donald Trump might actually help us to push this back by talking about it. It actually might wake people up, especially when we see things like the libel laws versus First Amendment. Understand that we are not electing a dictator. There are ways that we can push back and must push back against all of these people, not just a Donald Trump, but against, say, President Cruz or Rubio or Obama or Hillary Clinton. They all want to take our freedoms. We must push back on our own, individually refusing to do what they say and collectively at our state and local levels, even with jury nullification as an individual. Let's look at what Cruz is doing. Cruz is taking the uh, canard that was put out there by Romney, saying we're going to take a look at his tax returns. I'm sure there's bombshell stuff in there. So Cruz is taking it to the next level, talking about mafia ties. He said maybe it's the case that Donald's business dealings with the mob, with the mafia, maybe his taxes show these business dealings. That is a sign of desperation. He says Donald seems to be terrified to release his taxes. It suggests there might be a bombshell there. Well, you know what? I would be far more interested in Ted Cruz if he would complain about the IRS acting like a mafia. Remember the IRS that came after and still continues to go after its political enemies in the Tea Party? The IRS that Ted Cruz at one point in time said, we need to shut down? Well, he's shut up about that, hasn't he? He doesn't seem to have a problem with the IRS. Now, if the IRS is auditing you, maybe you're a criminal or a terrorist, according to Ted Cruz now, because it suits his position to try to uh, tear somebody down. Look at what uh, the Daily News is doing in New York. Of course, this is a rag that has criticized Donald Trump over and over again, but also calling the NRA's Wayne LaPierre a terrorist multiple times. Now what they're saying is this event that happened today in Virginia where a time photographer was slammed to the ground by a Secret Service agent. They're reporting many hours after the rest of the media is reporting that it was a Secret service agent. It wasn't somebody that was hired by Donald Trump. They're continuing to report that it was Trump's security. They have it in the headlines there, you can see. The caption to the picture says, Trump security slams a photographer to the ground. Then they say, shows him on his back, futilely kicking as a member of Trump's security detail did this to him. The security officer grabbed his neck, briefly choked him during the takedown. And then they talk about what happened. I never punched him, said Morris. I never touched him. But they say, but the video shows that he did reach for the security officer's throat, continually referring to it 
as the security officer until the very last two paragraphs, where the New York Daily News, in a fit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of honesty, I guess, trying to protect themselves from uh, accusations of being a biased rag, as they truly are, said, it is unclear whether the security staffer was a member of Trump's Secret Service detail or a member of his private security team. Other reporters there said he was wearing a badge on his hip and a red lapel pin, which is normally worn by government agents. And yes, the rest of the uh, news media has pretty much reported that it was a Secret Service agent, except for those who were incredibly biased, like the New York Daily News. Again, the claims to take down Donald Trump saying that he is a Ku Klux Klan supporter because... We have David Duke coming out and saying that he supports uh, him. He was defended by Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee said, and this is reported on Politico, does anybody really think that Donald Trump is a racist? Huckabee said on MSNBC's Morning Joe show, he said, David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan are absolutely abominable. I don't know anybody that I know, anybody that I've ever known that supports them. And look, I think there's an incredible, just an overwhelming fascination. I've been watching this this morning, but look, let me ask you this. Do you think Hillary Clinton is going to have to answer for her relationship with Senator Robert Byrd, who was an actual member of the KKK? A high-ranking member, I would add. Look, I'm not trying to defend, but maybe in an unartful way, and then he has a comeback from uh, 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 Joe Scarborough. Mike Huckabee comes back and says, does anybody really think Donald Trump is a racist? I don't mean, I don't really mean, I don't know of anything in his life that indicates this man has racist tendencies. Here's the thing. I doubt he's as sensitive to just how deplorable David Duke is to many of us in the South, said Mike Huckabee. I think it's because I'm from the South. I'm more sensitive, frankly, more repulsed by racism than maybe people who didn't grow up here. Well, here's what I would be more afraid of, he said. I would be afraid that it's the end of the Republican Party, not because of Donald Trump, but because of people being fed up with the Republican Party that is so elitist, so snobbish, that they demand not just Donald Trump, but they demand of me and every other Republican candidate a loyalty to the party. And if we have an election, and that's how we select presidents, we elect them. We don't select them by the party bosses. If the party bosses don't get the guy they want, what are they going to do? They're going to disavow the person that the people wanted? See, that's precisely the issue. Remember, the very first question of the very first debate was, raise your hands, would you run as an independent? And honestly, Donald Trump said, well, I would think about it. And he was excoriated, first by Rand Paul, then by the rest of the GOP establishment. Yet, after demanding these loyalty oaths from Donald Trump, we still have Reince Priebus come on and say, you understand what's going on. It's not really an election. They're kind of trying out to join us. Remember that clip? They're going to join us, the people who control the party. That's the way they see this. They don't really care what you, the voters, think. And if they push this through, and if the Democrats push through Hillary Clinton over the popular selection of Bernie Sanders, if he does better in the primaries, of course, they've already given her over 500 delegates with their superdelegates. But if they jerry-rig that, it is going to be a massive realignment. If there is something magical about the two-party system, and I don't believe there is, people are going to say, these aren't the two parties that we want. What if Donald Trump won the presidency? And what if he then created a new party putting the Republicans far behind him. Finally, one last thing. Let's take a look at the people behind Ted Cruz, because he's the one that has essentially come out with the dirty tricks, being so desperate for power. We've seen Marco Rubio, who is in the same place, throwing out childish insults, kind of like a Hispanic Dan Quayle, okay? But let's look at Ted Cruz. And this is an article from Politico. The man behind Ted Cruz's tricks. They say Ted Cruz likes to say personnel is policy. But the single most important personnel decision he's made in the 2016 presidential campaign has become his most controversial. They say his motto is trust Ted, but in selecting his campaign manager, Cruz tapped a take no prisoners operative that is well practiced in the political dark arts. They talk to people who call him the master of sleazy politics. They say his calling card has long been a win at all cost campaign. And they point out that if you're going to campaign as a pious fundamentalist Christian, you don't bring somebody like Jeff Rowe in. Jeff Rowe was somebody who was his opposition when he ran in the Senate primary against Dewhurst. He said, he tried to impugn my patriotism, and then he hired him as his representative. So when we see these types of tricks that are coming out, we understand precisely what they're about. Stay with us when we come back, a special report on the race baiters and the dirty tricks. And then a look at the first robot car caused accident. We'll be right back.
Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own, air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war, pathogens added to the food and water, and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality, turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands, and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.